Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to be showing how we can take this image and converting it to this image by using picture tubes, a custom picture tube, and a few other effects. So let's get to it. So to start off, the first thing I want to do is actually do a hue reduction on this image. And it's primarily because I really want just a consistent color scheme uh, so that when I make my you know flower petals that are like falling down that it kind of blends in with the scene. It's not standing out and I'm not having to do some really weird color uh, matching. And also I think it'll just make the image look nicer and softer if it kind of had a pink feel. I'm not going to go through the process of doing the hue map or the hue reduction. I have another video where I've covered this technique. So we're going to start off under the assumption that I've performed this hue map reduction and we have this sort of resulting image here. So then what follows is going to be the creation of the petals that we're going to have, you know, kind of falling all around here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to bring a bunch of images into a picture tube. Now, there's many ways to create the different petals, um, the, the, you know, in different orient, because what we're going to want to do is have those petals in different orientations, uh, different shapes. The more variability you have, uh, the better. Uh, the more realistic I think and more you know selling it's going to be uh, the trick is is that in creating all these variations of the petal you want to have consistent lighting from them if you if your lighting is all over the place or you have a single picture of a petal and you're just rotating it or warping it or whatnot but the lighting is kind of different it's not going to be as convincing so what I've done actually in this particular example is I've used the blender 3d modeler just created a very basic petal generic shape and then just rendered it and you know changed its orientation multiple times and re-rendered the images and saved them and in this way the lighting is consistent even though the orientation and even the shape of the petal changes. Now this is an example of creating all the different variants of the petal in Blender if you're an artistic person, uh, you could very just as well have, you know, hand painted these in PaintShop Pro. If you have an actual image of a petal or a leaf or something, then you could just take pictures of it, holding it or placing it in different orientations. And the whole idea is just that you get a bunch of different pictures of something in different angles and views, but the same lighting. You want the, cons same, the consistent lighting on the object. So once you're done creating all the different images, uh, you, want kind of, you want to kind of know how many images you're going to use because that's going to dictate both the dimensions of your picture tube image and uh, you know, how, how you're going to arrange them. So in my case, I created 16 images of petals, and that's so that I could arrange them into a nice 4x4 four four grid. And so because of that, when I create my new image that is going to be my picture tube image, I'm going to use something that has a square dimension, so just a 1080 by 1080. So this is going to be the basis of my picture tube that I'm going to create. Now. Uh, the way picture tubes work is you're just going to be placing all of your images on a grid and then the picture tube when you use it is going to randomly sample from anywhere on this grid to actually draw on your canvas what it is that you want. One thing in my mind that would simplify this activity is to apply a grid that matches your arrangement of images. You can very easily do some mental math and then just take your, you know, width and height and divide it by the dimensions of, uh, or divide it by the number of cells you're going to have rows and columns wise and come up with what your grid uh, dimensions are going to be, which you can enter in here. I've created a script called Tube Assistant. And essentially what this does is when I run it, it asks me what my grid dimensions are for my picture tube. And since I said it's 16, it's a four by four, I can just select four and four, and it's going to automatically adjust the grid to meet that sort of set of dimensions. So now that I have my grid and my picture tube base image, I can simply just you know drag in one of my petal images and then 
reduce it and arrange it keeping in mind that we don't want to change the orientation of any of them because again the lighting was very specifically set at the time of creation so really all we're doing is scaling and putting it in the box one thing to note um, you'll notice that i'm actually making them quite small in the picture frame or in the cell frame and that's because if you make them too big within the the cell frame when you try to draw them in succession they're going to start overlapping even if you set a really large step size and especially for these flower petals i don't want to be that to be the case so that's why I'm making them smaller. All right, so now I feel pretty good about all of my petals and how they're arranged. So then what we want to do is delete the background. And then we want to merge everything that is visible. So now what we have is a single layer it's transparent and it has all of our petals in the different orientations aligned in the center of each of their grids. So now it's not a bad idea to save this anyway, just as an image if you ever need to reference it later. But then what we can do is go to File, Export, Picture Tube. And, and then this is critical, so we need the cell across and cells down to match our grid. This is how it knows where to map and find everything. These settings are fine the way they are. Um, they'll, you can change them at the point of usage, so how you set them now is just going to be what the defaults are. So I'm going to call this Flower Petal Demo. And hit OK. So then now back at our original image, we don't need the grid on anymore. And then what we'll want to do is create a new raster layer. Then we can go to our picture tube tool. And we can search in here for our, you know, the, the picture tube that we just created. So I've done this before, I have another one, but this one is the one that I just created. So I can select that one. And just as a test, you can see that as you, you know, draw and drag around, it creates the petals, it, you know, randomly selects them, so the orientation varies among them. Uh, and so this is what we're going to do, and we're going to create a few layers of this. So to start off, we're going to create sort of the set of petals that are going to be behind the subject. So I'm going to actually bring the scale down a little bit, maybe to like 67. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And probably increase the step size a little bit. And then we're just going to draw kind of around. We're just going to draw a bunch of petals. It doesn't have to be too organized. Right now, we don't want to cover the subject just yet. We're going to do a different layer for that. So just keep in mind, this is going to be all the petals that are like behind. So they're going to be a little bit smaller, probably a little bit more dense. Went a little too far. I don't want to go in front of this tree, so I'll erase some of those. All right, so we have sort of our little curtain of some of the petals in here. They don't blend too well just yet. Um, and we want to actually adjust the color a little bit. So I didn't get the color just right when I was in Blender, but that's very easy to adjust at this point. So we could, with that layer selected, go to Hue, Saturation, Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. And then just kind of tweak the hue a little bit, maybe make it just slightly more orange. Not a whole lot. Maybe even in the reds, bring it down a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this, is, this is just to kind of get it to blend a little bit more with some of the petals that are on the ground. I 
as well. Um, it seems like the shadow might be a little bit too strong, so then we can go to adjust brightness, contrast, and levels. And then just, you know, drag this middle slider over to the left just to kind of brighten it a little bit, blend it in with the scene a little bit more. So since this is the set of petals that are going to be kind of behind and since this image has a very narrow depth of field meaning that the uh, uh, there's a lot of blur in the background and even the foreground and it's just sharp where the subject is so we'll kind of place these petals behind the subject if you will so then that means we'll need to apply some blur by going to adjust blur gaussian blur and and again not even a very not a very strong value just like a five here i think seemed to work and you can see how just by blurring that it really puts all those petals in the background so next we're going to create our next layer of petals and so we can go back to our picture tube maybe make the scale just a little bit bigger since these petals are going to be somewhat closer and again, just painting over again with the picture tube, and that's providing all the randomness and variation that you know helps make this feel a little bit more natural and really speeds up trying to do all the random distribution. And in this case, you can actually paint in front. Like now we're kind of okay, but you can also be strategic about where you do that painting so that you're not like covering the subject's face or other areas of importance that you wouldn't really want to have happen anyway. All right, and then once again, just to get it to blend in the same ways that we did before, we'll do the hue, saturation, and lightness adjustment. And since it's already set to what I had just last used, I don't have to change anything. Same thing with levels. Kind of does all of it for me now even though we're these petals kind of represent being in the sort of sharp range um, i feel like it still blends a little bit better if we blur it slightly because they really could be kind of moving in a sense right they're kind of blowing or falling whichever one you really want it to be so still want to go to adjust blur and say maybe blur more and that should be good. That that kind of just gives it a less, you know, overly crisp feel, making it feel like it doesn't belong there, but it's still kind of, it just blends it in a little bit more. And then we'll just do one more layer of this, um, this time with uh, quite a bit larger scale, but much less petals, I'd say. You'd want your step to be quite a bit larger as well. Um, and just a few, right? Just a few petals just to kind of, you know, represent that much closer set of petals that might be falling in view. And then this layer's style is going to be very similar to the furthest back one where we want it to be quite blurry. Because it's much more out of focus now. And again, the same hue, saturation, lightness effects, and the same luminance effects. So now we've really enveloped the character in this sort of raining, you know, flower petals sort of view. And we've done all of that benefiting from the capabilities provided by picture tubes. So now, just to finish it all off, uh, what I'd like to do is add another layer and then add sort of like a vignette effect. Instead of doing a standard sort of shadowy vignette, I'm going to do what is like the opposite. It's going to be like a white vignette. And so it's essentially just a gradient where it's a full white color, but it's blending from transparent to uh, white, full opaque white. So then a fill, applying that fill gradient is going to have this sort of effect. I think another just quick fix here would be to use like the clone tool just to kind of get rid of this guy here. It's kind of a little distracting.
And then finally, another thing we can do is we can duplicate this layer, adjust some Gaussian blur, not just a slight bit again, like five, and then change the opacity to like 50%. So then it gives also that sort of just soft feel all over the whole scene, including her. Uh, but as is typical in my case, I do like to still emphasize certain points of the image. So the way we can do that in this case is we, we create a mask around that blurred layer that we just created. Then we take our regular paintbrush and with the black color selected and maybe like a lower hardness, um, just want to erase some of that blur layer to bring the detail back just right around her face, maybe in some details in the hair. And then since the book is kind of the subject of what she's looking at, uh, maybe kind of, you know, bringing the detail back there. And so then even with this very softened image, you still kind of have that focus right, right here. And that's it. So picture tubes are pretty cool. Uh, I think they're more conventionally used for creating like, you know, variable image frames uh, and or just repeating patterns of some type of like image with a transparent background. This is just another example of how you can use it. Uh, for sure, it does have that layer of complexity behind it where it's requiring you to, you know, generate all the images that are consistent in lighting but has their own variability. But there's a lot of applications of how you could even use this particular technique, not just with flowers. But I hope you learned something through this process uh, and that you can have fun with it and create something cool of your own. And that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the screen. And I'll see you guys next time.